Imagine you're in a completely dark room. You can't see anything. All of a sudden, you're hit with a ball. Where did that come from? You have no idea, and because you didn't see it coming, you couldn't get out of the way. That's what a diagnosis of lead poisoning is like for families. Out of the blue, often after a routine yearly checkup, a doctor tells them their child has elevated blood lead levels. There were no symptoms, their child appeared fine, maybe a little hyper, but what two-year-old isn't? Their home is newer, there's no flaking paint, where did the lead come from? Lead is everywhere. For decades, it seems like it was added to everything. Gasoline, paint, pipes, you name it. So while today, most uses of lead have been phased out, its legacy remains in our homes, our water, and the soil. The dangers of lead paint get a lot of attention, and rightfully so. Most cases of childhood lead poisoning are the result of lead exposure to lead dust from deteriorating lead paint. But for some children, especially infants, lead in water is of greater concern. The family member at highest risk of lead poisoning is a baby fed exclusively powdered formula mixed with lead-contaminated tap water. Lead gets into our drinking water when plumbing materials that contain lead corrode. Homes that experience the most problems with lead often have a lead service line, a lead pipe that connects to the home from the main water line. But fixtures and water heaters inside the house can also be sources of lead. Private well systems may contain brass pumps or other components that can contaminate water with lead. Congress enacted the Safe Drinking Water Act in 1974 to provide a comprehensive regulatory framework for ensuring the safety of our nation's drinking water. For the vast majority of us, the law has done its job. The water that we drink is safe. We get up in the morning, take a shower, drink our coffee, brush our teeth without a second thought. Cholera outbreaks no longer kill thousands of people. The improvements in the quality of our drinking water is one of the major public health successes of the previous century. Unfortunately, while we may have solved the cholera problem, we haven't fixed the lead problem. Congress banned the installation of new lead pipes in 1986, and the Federal Environmental Protection Agency published its first regulation to address lead in drinking water, known as the Lead and Copper Rule, in 1991. Yet, almost 30 years later, news broke about the high levels of lead in Flint, Michigan's water. Then, in January 2016, Mississippi state officials announced that there were high levels of lead in the city of Jackson's water. In the wake of these stories, a group of researchers here at the University of Mississippi came together to try to answer one question. What is the risk of lead exposure from drinking water in Mississippi? Hundreds of Mississippi families are currently living in a dark room. According to lead surveillance reports published by the Mississippi State Department of Health, approximately 300 children in Mississippi, on average, are diagnosed with elevated blood lead levels every year. A ball is headed their child's way, but they can't see it. The lead particles that poison children are invisible. Families don't know if their walls are covered in lead paint, if there's lead in the water, or in the soil outside where their child plays. We can't know if there's lead in our homes unless we test for it. At least with paint hazards, there are some things that can give us warning signs, like chipping or peeling paint on windowsills or dust on the floor. But with water, there's nothing to tip us off to the risk. Lead is completely odorless, colorless, and tasteless in water. Lead exposure has health effects for everyone, but children are more at risk because their bodies and brains are still developing. The impacts and effects of lead exposure can last a lifetime. Reductions in IQ and decreased ability to pay attention can lead to underperformance in school and decreased future earnings. Expectant mothers with past exposures store lead in their bones that can migrate to the blood and fetus. The lifetime economic burden of lead poisoning for Mississippi children born in 2019 is estimated to be more than $632 million by the value of lead prevention website. What if we could turn a light on in that dark room? What if we could give families the information they need to see the threat coming and get their child out of the way? thereby avoiding the harm altogether. 
This is known as primary prevention, removal of lead hazards from a child's environment before exposure. This is not my idea or a new idea. It's been a policy priority of the Centers for Disease Control for years. There is no safe level of lead exposure, so all sources of lead in a child's environment should be controlled. We need to shine a light on the presence of lead in Mississippi drinking water. Communities and agencies need to know where the problems are so they can design effective policies and other interventions. Families need to know if there's lead in the water so they can take action to protect their children. We can turn this light on by doing three things, increasing transparency, increasing testing, and increasing outreach. First, we need to increase the access to the data that already exists. The lead and copper rule requires utilities to monitor and test household tap water for lead. If lead levels are higher than 15 parts per billion in more than 10% of the tested homes, this is what's known as the action level, utilities must test more frequently and take action to reduce corrosion. Utilities are required to provide annual water quality reports to customers, providing information about lead sampling results. But these are not easy to read, and they're not always provided directly. Notices may be posted online or in newspapers that no one reads. The Environmental Protection Agency has taken steps to increase transparency in revisions to the lead and copper rule published in December of 2021. By January 2024, utilities must submit a lead service line inventory to the state and make it publicly accessible. This is a critical step towards raising awareness about which properties are served by lead service lines. The new rules will also require utilities to immediately notify customers within 24 hours if the action level is exceeded. It will take increased oversight and enforcement on the state level to ensure that all Mississippi utilities fully comply with these new requirements. Second, we need to increase the testing of household tap water. Utilities are required to sample only a small fraction of homes within their service areas. A utility with less than 100,000 customers may only have to sample 30 homes every three years. This type of testing does not generate enough data to adequately assess the risk. Further, the 15 part per billion action level is not a health-based standard. It's a technology-based standard, meaning it was based on what the Environmental Protection Agency thought utilities could achieve given the technology at the time. Remember, there is no safe level of lead exposure. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration's limit for lead in bottled water is much lower at five parts per billion. More testing is needed to detect lead at lower concentration levels in order to protect the most vulnerable populations, especially young children. The work of the University of Mississippi Lead and Drinking Water team is revealing that lead in water is a problem throughout the state. A search of lead sampling results contained in the Mississippi Drinking Water Watch database reveals that 15 water systems exceeded the action level in sampling conducted in the past two years. An additional 33 water systems reported concentrations of more than five parts per billion. While this represents only 4% of active water systems in the state, it's likely an undercount, as we know that exceedances of the action level often go undetected due to the lack of a robust testing regime. Almost two thirds of the household tap water samples our team tested in 2018 and 2019 had detectable levels of lead. Through our team's partnership with the Mississippi State Department of Health, we test water samples submitted by families whose children have been diagnosed with elevated blood lead levels. Over 40% of those samples to date have had detectable levels of lead including one sample with the eye-popping concentration of 80.5 parts per billion. That's 16 times higher than the FDA's limit for bottled water. Programs need to be established to provide free and low-cost testing services to families and to the places where children spend a lot of their time, like schools and childcare facilities. Some utilities across the country are already doing this. The cities of Louisville, Kentucky and Newark, New Jersey, for instance, provide free water testing to customers upon request. Partnerships like the one our team has with the Mississippi State Department of Health 
can be developed between government agencies and universities and nonprofit organizations to provide these type of testing services. The SIP Safe program, conducted by Mississippi State University Extension and funded by a grant from the Environmental Protection Agency, is working to reduce childhood exposures by screening the water in qualifying schools and childcare facilities. The University of Mississippi team is a partner in the SIP Safe program. Of the 20 childcare facilities that our team tested in the summer of 2021, half had at least one fixture or water fountain with lead concentration above five parts per billion. The good news is these facilities now have the information they need to protect the children in their care from harm. Finally, we need targeted outreach programs to mitigate the risk to the most vulnerable population, formula-fed infants. Very few websites provide clear guidance to new parents about how to ensure that their tap water is safe to use when preparing powdered formula. I was able to find a handful that did discuss the risks of lead in drinking water and provided information about how families could get their water tested. But most websites and fact sheets assert that it's completely safe to use tap water without any caveats for homes served by private wells or public water systems with a history of high lead levels. Organizations that provide services to new mothers need to work to ensure that the risk of lead in drinking water are clearly communicated and guidance is provided about mitigation measures such as the use of filters or premixed formula. We can't keep living in the dark. Childhood lead poisoning is costing society millions of dollars, although those costs are hidden as well. It's much harder to account for the lost wages of lead poisoned kids than it is to state the engineering and labor costs to replace a lead pipe. Full replacement of lead pipes would be the best approach to protect public health, but it is an expensive intervention that's not feasible in all communities. Luckily, there are some low cost behavioral changes we can all make to reduce lead exposures. We can run our faucets for several minutes before use. We can avoid cooking food with water taken directly from the hot tap. We can avoid using unfiltered tap water when preparing baby formula. Through increased transparency, testing, and outreach, we can help families move out of the darkness and take action to reduce lead exposure and improve the health and educational outcomes of Mississippi's children. In the process, we'll be freeing these children and society from the lifetime health and economic burdens of lead poisoning. Thank you. Thank you.